As now we know that the class the attempt of classification was made by first the early chemist, then the Daubonier came or uh, this thing and after that there was an attempt made by Newland on the basis of musical note. We have already studied an interesting classification and the next classification but somehow due to some reasons those classifications were failed. So the next attempt who made a history in the chemistry, who made a great mark in the chemistry, who made a great contribution in the chemistry was done by Dumriti Mendeleev who was a professor who was professor in Petersburg uh, University as chemistry professor in Moscow and you know he made a great mark he was able to classify successfully able to classify 63 elements because when he classified the elements 63 elements were known and he was able to classify those 63 elements in a tabular form which was clearly the understood by the all and even he made a very bold prediction he even predicted the existence of certain elements who were not discovered at that moment so that was a bold prediction and even his uh, this thing when he classified the elements he uh, he did the classification he did uh, was in a very practical way so let me tell you what the idea came to his mind and how he did see at that moment 63 elements were known as i've told you so what he did he took 63 cards he took 63 cards then what he did he wrote name of he wrote properties of each element like he picked one element then how it was looking he just wrote on that card and uh, chemically he react uh, react uh, that element with hydrogen and oxygen and the, uh, the type of hydride and oxide it was forming he wrote that also on the card so the, he wrote again I'm repeating he wrote the physical properties that was looking like he picked one element how he physically it was looking so he just wrote that and the proper when he reacted the that element with hydrogen and oxide then what kind of oxide or hydride it was forming he wrote the formula for that also so likewise he uh, he did he wrote uh, these properties and the formula of hydride and oxide for 63 elements on 63 different cards then what he did he wrote the property and uh, this thing the hydride oxide formula and just clipped the card on the wall and this he did like likewise 63 cards were pinned uh, on the wall then then he starts sorting out the cards um, which were similar like he was uh, he was looking like yeah this metal is hard found to be hard this is also hard so somehow less harder than it he just claimed that on this so this is why he, uh, likewise he starts sorting out cards, cards with similar properties and as he was doing that you know accidentally the elements got arranged in order of increasing atomic weights and also the similarity in properties this led to the formulation of his periodic table that is mainly periodic table so how he did he he arranged the elements in a proper tabular form called as periodic table I repeat called as periodic table so that means periodic table is a tabular chart which contain the uh, you can say the uh, the uh, vertical columns were called as the vertical co uh, groups and the it consists of horizontal rows called as periods so he was able to classify 63 elements 63 elements you need to remember the figure 63 elements in a proper tabular form that is called as periodic table that comprise of periods, horizontal rows and the uh, vertical column called as groups. So <coughs> he uh, formulated the law also because as he was pinning the cards uh, together so they, those elements I've, as I have told you got automatically arranged in the increasing atomic weights. So this and even the periodicity in the properties was observed. <clears throat> now what is periodicity you must be thinking the ma'am is using the word periodicity what does it actually means periodicity means reoccurrence of properties at regular intervals of time so the, the reoccurrence occur only if the elements resemble among themselves so it led to the formulation of the law that is called as mod uh, this thing Mendeleev periodic law so what does it state it states that the properties of elements whether the properties are physical or whether the properties are chemical the properties of elements are periodic function of their atomic weights so it led to the formulation of Mendeleev's periodic table that will be doing it now that how he arranged the elements in the tabular form see it was Mendeleev's periodic uh, table the main contribution the see how it uh, what does it comprise of this Mendeleev periodic table first of all comprise of as I have told you this thing the vertical column called as groups and the horizontal rows called as periods like you can see that. So how many groups were there? There were zero, there were nine groups zero to eight. 
he named those groups in a Roman one. You can see 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, likewise. So he started with 0 and ended up at 8. So, total of 9 groups were there. And what about periods? The periods were 7 periods were there. You can see that likewise. So, it comprised of the vertical columns that is called as groups 0 to numbered as 0 to 8 and the periods 1 to 7. So, he made an attempt to classify these 63 elements in the way as you can see on the board. So you must, it, I think it is clear to you that how see in a group it is helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon and likewise in the period they are arranged in such a way. Now, what is the contribution, how he explained that how they are arranged or how they are put into the, they are clubbed into the table. So, what, uh, what or you can say what was the advantage to us that this table gave us. So, firstly it made the study systematic, it made the study systematic, how? See, uh, in the first group we can see lithium, sodium, potassium, copper and this together. That means if we know, that if I know that copper belongs to the first group along with lithium and sodium and potassium. So, if I have the proper idea of the property of sodium, I can easily have an idea for the element which belongs to the same group right. So, it made the study systematic by knowing that which element belongs to which group we can know we can just recall the properties of that group and if we know that this element belongs to certain group we can recall all those properties because all those properties will be applicable to those that particular element also which is present in that group. So, <clears throat> on the uh, as a whole like I want to say that it made the study systematic, it made the study easier second contribution towards second uh, advantage of this periodic table which this periodic table gave us was that he left spaces at certain places he left spaces at certain places like the place was there th there was a place actually the, this periodic table has those filled places the in, that is indicated see all those places which are indicated this purple with purple ones were actually the vacant spaces uh, which he left in the periodic table and that was that means why he left the, the question comes why he left those vacant spaces actually when he was discovered when he was arranging the elements according to the properties and according to the atomic mass he he just made a prediction he just assumed no that there is a kind of element uh, which which is uh, not uh, present now but in future will get that certain element whose properties will lie between those elements and actually the pro after the uh, Mendeleev gave the periodic table uh, those elements were discovered and they actually filled those gaps which were left by the Mendeleev and it was the very bold prediction everybody was so shocked that how Mendeleev uh, got to know about those unpredicted elements dot dot those were not discovered at that moment and he actually named those those vacant spaces as aka aluminium aka boron that means next to it next to it and just left the vacant space there so that uh, when later on those elements would will be discovered so nobody has to change this periodic table he was so confident he just want that that those elements will be definitely predicted and they can be just pick and uh, place at that vacant place, uh, space which is left by the men leave and as i've told you that it really happened you know it really happened scandium was the one who the, was called as uh, this thing who felt that vacant space, gallium was the one who filled that vacant space. So, that was the very bold prediction. So, always uh, this is a very important question that anybody can ask you that why Mendeleev left spaces in uh, periodic table. So, you should know that he made a bold prediction, he even predicted the uh, this thing the, uh, the existence of those undiscovered elements and actual those elements were uh, discovered at later stage and was and filled those vacant spaces which were called as aka aluminium or aka that such element. You can see that the places which are marked with purple areas were discovered by discovered later, but it was there these elements their existence was predicted before by Mendeleev before their discovery and later on really those elements were discovered and they filled those spaces and it was a great achievement. It was a great achievement that you do not have certain thing in nature and still you are predicting it and still it is being discovered and directly placed into this right. So, second uh, main contribution is that first it made the systematic study uh, and second it uh, just filled the uh, vacant space left in the gaps. The, he made the prediction of undiscovered elements right and thirdly he corrected the atomic mass of certain elements while he was arranging he get to know that certain elements do not have the right atomic mass 
for example i take an example for you you can you should know that at least one example you need to know that what the, in which case he corrected the atomic mass so right while he was arranging the elements so beryllium was assigned an atomic mass of 13.5 so according to it it should be placed between carbon and nitrogen but the properties did not match the the position of beryllium between carbon and nitrogen was not justified so he just went into deep and he he, he said that the, the, my prediction can't be wrong that the place of beryllium does not lie between carbon and nitrogen it may have the wrong atomic mass he just corrected the atomic mass and actually he was right when he corrected the atomic mass the atomic mass of the beryllium came out to be 9 means its position lies between the lithium and boron and it he was correct in the, his assumption the atomic mass of the beryllium was actually wrong before it was not 13.5 it is 9 so see it is also a bold prediction that he is uh, making a the, this thing uh, a fundamental property wrong that yeah this is uh, this is calculated to be wrong and it has to be uh, recorrect and i am confident in my uh, the, this thing arrangement of elements the, showing the periodic uh, relationship between them and so he made a great contribution in that way. So, three things he, that made a mark in the history of the chemistry is the, uh, when he was classifying that first systematic study was the first scientist who made the, the classifying the 63 elements in a proper manner and secondly he made the bold prediction that I told you that he discovered that he left the spaces in the periodic table as he was so confident and also predicted the discoveries of those undiscovered elements which later on really discovered and got position uh, at the places which were left by the Menleaf. And third, he corrected the atomic mass of many elements. So, it is a great achievement. But as, uh, but, uh, uh, as he did the great achievement also, but there were few lacking points. But still, uh, do not forget he made a great achievement because today's mod this table is being refined as modern periodic table, but still the effort which came from men leave only. So, I am just listing the, the limitation which he had in the periodic table which he failed to explain which, is, which are taken as the drawbacks of Mendeleev periodic table. So, just listen to it carefully. <laughs>